The migrant crisis, the channel migrant crisis, you may wonder why I've not spoken about this much for the last couple of weeks. Well, the reason, of course, is that it's been, the weather has been dreadful. Persistent northeasterly winds in the English Channel making crossings impossible. Yesterday was a huge day. The Home Office have confirmed a figure of 742, although that is being met with a lot of scepticism by the Daily Mail and many others who thinks perhaps that was when they stopped counting. We don't know. Today is another very, very big day across the English Channel. But to my astonishment this morning, we see a Times front page uh, that made me laugh. You know, stop more migrants or pay the price, France warned. Pretty Patel getting tough with the French. Isn't Pretty Patel good at getting tough? You know, she makes these speeches. She says we're going to give long prison sentences to traffickers. We're going to give life prison sentences to traffickers. We're going to stop the flow. It's unacceptable. Uh, Dan Mahoney, uh, who is the senior figure in the Home Office in charge of special operations, makes the same speech time and time again. And what she's saying is, ah, we haven't handed over the £54 million pounds yet and I won't give it to you unless you stop this from happening completely ignoring the fact we've already given them 130 million pounds and it's made absolutely no difference whatsoever so pretty Patel talking tough don't make me laugh but what is to be done about this crisis and it is a crisis um, and it's a problem for the government because when people are asked what do they think are the most troubling questions today it's now ranking third equal with the environment. Obviously, the health crisis and finance and the economy are first and second, but it's now ranking equal third. So this does have the ability to cause the government a very great deal of problem. Now, joining me now is Claire Pearsall, Conservative councillor in Kent and former special advisor at the Home Office. Claire, good evening and welcome to GB News. Good evening. So Pretty Patel gets tough with the French, and all I can do is just laugh uh, because uh, your Home Secretary uh, keeps on making uh, specific promises and tough pledges, and they don't really amount to a row of beans, do they? I think this particular pledge that came out this morning on the front page is, is empty. It's empty words. It's not going to make a blind bit of difference. If we are expecting the French to help us police our borders, which is essentially what we're doing, yep. then withholding the money is only going to make this worse. So, I, you know, the French are just going to say, OK, fine, we won't have your money, we're not going to help you. So this will just get worse, we'll see more crossings happening. So what do you want Priti Patel to do? I want her to go and work with the French. Uh, and it was something when I was at the Home Office that we did, and people may scoff at this, but you do have to go over, you have to speak to them, you have to work with them. If we want some assistance, and, you know, the north coast of France is quite vast, so we did put in some money to help them get equipped to stop these crossings from happening. But you need to keep on with that diplomatic relationship. You need to go speak to shop owners, ask the French to go and speak to their shop owners, because where are these ribs and inflatable boats coming from in the first place? Now, I'm sure that they will understand that their shopkeepers will have a certain amount in stock, um, and that has gone up exponentially. So why are they working harder with that? I think the diplomatic channels are the most important, even though you wouldn't see results if, immediately. If the French will play ball... And at the moment, Emmanuel Macron seems to be very reluctant to have a summit with us. Um, there's much talk uh, with, you know, big, big things happening within the government today with their tax increases, national insurance increases, dividend increases, a big vote tomorrow, speculation about a reshuffle perhaps happening towards the end of this week or next week. Uh, and do you, as a Conservative councillor, want to see Priti Patel staying in that job at the Home Office or is it time for somebody else? I think these positions need to be reshuffled from time to time. I'm not going to sit here and speculate as to if there is going to be a reshuffle and who should be in that job. I'm not the Prime Minister. He has got all of those MPs, some of them with some enormous experience. I think he has a lot to choose from. He needs to choose wisely. OK, that was very diplomatic, the answer, and thank you very much for coming on and joining us. Well, let's get a slightly different perspective on this. I'm going to speak now to Ewan Roberts, centre manager at Asylum Link in Merseyside, a charity supporting asylum seekers in 
the Merseyside area. Ewan, good evening. Welcome to GB News. Evening. So we've got probably now over 14,000 people uh, that have come into the United Kingdom over the English Channel. Uh, we've got a large number of people that have come in. And he, this footage, by the way, is today's footage out there in the English Channel, filmed exclusively for GB News. But, you and we've also got a large number of people who've come in from Afghanistan. Um, how on earth... I mean, where on earth are we going to put all of these people? Because I know that four-star hotels have been filled up all over the country. I know that, uh, I think, a Pontins somewhere is being used. We've got former army barracks being used. We've got private residences being used. Where on earth in the Liverpool area are you putting everybody? Well, places will be found for people. You do, and it's a disaster. So you, you do what you can. I, I take issue with what you said before about uh, it being a crisis. It's not. There's, apart from the Afghans, there's no more refugees coming in over the channel than there has oh. been before. In fact, there's been fewer for such a long time. And we, 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 can't, we constantly get this, the images of the boats in the news because they're newsworthy. But actually, over the pandemic, fewer people were coming in through the asylum process. And so you've got to take that into account. <laughs> in but terms of the English Channel, these are, these are the English channel it's 14,000 this year. It was 8,500 yeah. last year. It was 1,800 the year before that. So, in there's terms of the channel, the numbers, are, the numbers are rocketing, aren't they? There's normally about 30,000 people claim asylum, and usually it's less than that. And actually, France takes over double the refugees that Britain takes. Of course. So really, what you actually need is a better agreement within the European Union, of which we're, of course, not part of anymore, to, to actually deal with the refugees properly, instead of having something stupid like Angela Merkel having to open the door to try to shame everybody into acting in a humanitarian way when Germany took over well over a million refugees. Yeah. We have to sort these things out. Otherwise, all that will happen is people keep bouncing back to these headlines and going, oh, isn't it awful? And are you, are you completely relaxed? Um, because I think about what's happened in Malmo and places like that, which since 2015 have taken a very large number of young men, because let's face it, the vast majority of those that came across the Mediterranean and are coming into this country are young men. Are you entirely comfortable that a huge number of young men uh, being put into one city or another are coming from a culture with very different social attitudes towards women uh, and many other groups within society? I mean, I mean, doesn't it concern you that this is leading to a huge cost? Not just the cost of housing uh, people who've come here, who lodge for asylum, who, even when it fails, uh, don't get removed. But, but also, are you concerned about a social cost here? No, I'm not. No? When, when we integrate people properly and we work properly at community cohesion, we get the benefits of all these things. I watched a guy, an Afghan man, Wahid, I can't remember his second name, who is a radiographer now and does telemedicine back to the, the war zones. People who have set up their own businesses here. Guys who are clever, resilient, but just need an opportunity to get on. And our society benefits from them. People setting well, up restaurants. <coughs> people, people really contributing to this country. There's and no they doubt. They've done so out of adversity. There's and no I'm doubt. I'm really not worried about this, genuine... this issue yeah. you're saying about all these young men coming. Because yes. the people who get out of war zones and manage to escape from these places tend to be the fit, young and able. There are very few disabled asylum seekers. And there are very few women asylum seekers and very obviously very, very, few, very few child about asylum one third, seekers. About one-third of, of the people in our place are female. <laughs> well, you're not representative because 90% of those plus that are crossed the channel this year are young men. Uh, I, I have to say, finally, not a single person who's crossed the channel this year, not a single person, despite the fact many fail because they don't qualify as genuine refugees, not a single one has been sent back anywhere. Would, are there circumstances in which you think we should deport people or should everybody that comes be able to stay? No, well, not everybody that comes that should be able to stay, but the asylum process should be very, very different from what it is. It's far too adversarial. And what you get then is you've, you've got somebody who's tracked halfway around the world and you go, oh, prove your case, which is extremely difficult to do so. Whereas if we had an inquisitorial system where you sat down side by side with people and said, let's look at this you'd get a faster outcome and you'd probably right. get a better outcome. 
So and if I they, fa and if they fail, if they fail, should they be should they be deported? If somebody has, if you, there are and undoubtedly there are baddies within the system. Where yeah. any system you've got, there's good and bad. So you have to have a fight, a way of finding that out. But I right, and if we do find that out, should we deport them? Yes, you should. Good. Uh, and, but you have to take certain circumstances into account. All right. It, it's all right. very difficult to send somebody back to further danger, right? And I, when I look back at all these things where we've tried to get rid of people because of terrorist offences, I think it would actually be safer. You might say there's a cost attached with it, but there's a cost attached to everything. If they're in our country, we can control them and we can do the stuff here. And that's well, the way I would well, look at it. I admire your confidence, Ewan Roberts, and I want to thank you for coming on and putting your point of view. Well, look, folks, I always give you both sides of an argument, and I think it's very important that we do it, uh, but I'm in very little doubt uh, that Priti Patel's position is now very precarious indeed. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.